Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. I'm sitting on a deck about 10 meters above uh, sea level. So a meter is about 3.28 feet. Think of it as 33, 3.3 feet. So 10 meters is about 33 feet of water which any scuba diver is well aware of because that's the depth at which the pressure of the water above you is equal to the pressure of all the air above you when you're standing at sea level. So you've got two atmospheres of gauge pressure on you or, or one atmosphere of gauge pressure, um, which is the difference between the pressure you where you are and atmospheric pressure or absolute pressure will be two atmospheres on you. Why is this important? Well, I'm talking about sea level rise in this video. And during the Eemian, about 130,000 years ago, when the temperature was just slightly above what it is today, the global sea level was about 33 feet. Um, it was about six to nine meters higher. Um, which is just under that 10 meters rather where I'm sitting that 33 feet so why was the sea level that much higher well the best guess is that about half of that sea level rise was from Greenland ice melt and about half of it was from Antarctic ice melt now going back the other way about 21,000 years ago the during the peak of the last ice age, there was miles of ice locked up in the ice caps over North America in the Laurentide ice sheet, which extended all the way from the Canadian archipelago, even extending out into the Arctic Ocean. And the northern side and the southern side, it extended all the way down to about St. Louis or so. So Ottawa, for example, at 45 degree latitude north, was under about one and a half kilometers of ice. And there was lots of ice also um, covering Europe, Asia. And uh, as a result of all this water around the globe being locked up in ice, the global sea levels were about 120 meters lower. So multiplied by 3.3, that's 360 plus about 36, that's about 400 feet um, lower. So there was a lot of land exposed that is now underwater. The Bering Strait, which connects um, Alaska to Russia, what is only about 50 meters deep. So with 70 meters of, above, of sea, uh, with 120 meters rather of sea level drop, it was about 70 meters above above sea level, the, the whole floor of the Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf and the Bering Strait. And during that time, there was vegetation, um, well, there, there, there was, so, so things were growing, there was carbon being stored in the soils, um, which are now sediment. So there's a lot of organic material in the sediments and that organic material is in, has been in a frozen state for a long period of time but now because of the warming ocean above it especially the eastern siberian arctic shelf the membrane of frozen material has been perforated and we're getting methane coming up from the seafloor as being measured by the russians but i digress getting back to sea level we went from 120 meters lower than today to where we are today. And most of that happened in the last 8,000, well, the last 10, 11,000 years. There were periods of where the warming was very large. In fact, it was, it was um, about five centimeters per decade which is about multiplied by, sorry, 50 centimeters per decade, five centimeters per year. That's two and a half inches almost per year of sea level rise during the, the, the peak. So, so that would be 
um, multiply by a hundred years so in a century it was 500 centimeters or five meters so that was about the peak and that occurred um, that rate of sea level rise occurred for several hundred years at least so this is what the rise this is the type of sea level rise that the earth is capable of producing but of course in this case we don't have melting of an ice cap over North America we just have the melting of the Greenland ice cap and the Anta Antarctic ice cap. So right now, sea level is rising at a rate of about 3.4 millimeters per year, which is a bit, which is quite a bit faster than the average. If you if you take an average from say 1970 to 2000 and take an average now, the rate now is almost about is 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 well over double what it was back then so sea level rise is accelerating so how quickly will it rise well we're losing ice mass on greenland about 250 gigatons a year and that rate is doubling roughly every five to seven years and we're losing not quite as much but almost as much on antarctica and that rate is doubling also every five to seven years. But most of the sea level rise so far is, is from expansion, thermal expansion of the seawater. So if you heat up water, the water molecules move much faster. They jiggle much faster. So they push each other apart. So the water takes up more space. So as you heat up the water temperature, then the water occupies more space, causes the sea level rise. So that's the biggest factor up to now. Another, the next biggest factor has been the glacier melt. Um, so mountain glaciers, um, especially northern high latitude um, glaciers are, that are sitting on land are melting and that water is running off into the oceans, having a huge uh, con contribution to sea level rise. One of the things that's decreased sea level rise is is the use is is um, human water usage, for example. Um, if we take water from the ground below the ground table, and then we use it for many of our industrial processes and for drinking, etc., and then it ends up at the surface, then that will that will also um, have a, have an effect on sea level rise. Um, but right now, what is coming into becoming more and more important key parts of sea level rise are Greenland ice shelf melting, Greenland ice cap melting, the ice that's sitting on the glacial bedrock in Greenland, and also Antarctic uh, ice cap melting, the ice on bedrock in Antarctica. So how much is in Greenland? Global sea level rise equivalent of about seven meters in West Antarctic ice sheet. It's about four or five meters and then if you add east antarctic ice sheet so you got both greenland and antarctica we're talking at, ab at about somewhere about 67 to 70 meters of sea level rise so no ice at all in the ice caps or on the glaciers we're talking about 70 meters above present day so how quickly can we get the sea level to rise well a few years ago i did a video and i just calculated that you know, conservatively, with a double period, doubling period of about seven years, um, we're looking at about seven meters of sea level rise by 2070. So, of course, that would require um, exponential increases in sea level rise, which would be require exponential levels in ice melt from the ice caps. So that that would be by 2070. What are other people saying? Well, James Hansen is quite famous for talking about his five meters of sea level rise by 2100 in the worst case the ipcc numbers are way way lower than that they were 50 or 60 centimeters of sea level rise um, multiplied 0.6 by the 3.3 conversion for centimeters and we're talking about uh, 0.2 meters of sea level rise to 0.3 meters of sea level rise. 
Um, those numbers have since been updated, even from the AR5 IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Report. So now we're talking about those, their numbers are getting much, much closer to one meters of sea level, one meter of sea level rise, um, which is about 3.3 feet um, by 2100. But if you look at more recent papers, then when that report came out in 2013, um, there's papers that are talking about a few meters of sea level rise by 2100. And there's even some papers that are starting to talk about those sort of numbers, perhaps even by 2050, 2060 sort of time frame. So the numbers, my number is never going to change. I mean, this is the number, you know, that means there has to be a lot of nonlinear feedbacks, a lot of nonlinear effects in order for that type of sea level rise, seven meters by 2070 to be realized. I think the system is capable of that. Um, numbers are converging up to those sort of numbers. So what does this sort of mean? You know, well, even a meter of sea level rise is serious stuff to humanity. There's many low-lying cities, think New York, think London, um, London, England, um, think of major huge cities in, um, in Asia, in China, um, think of um, Bangladesh, you know, entire countries, think of the Netherlands. Um, this area where I am right now is the outer banks of North Carolina and, you know, a meter of sea level rise is catastrophic to this region, in fact to the entire eastern seaboard of the U.S. Um, Miami and there's there's this these are things that we know are going to happen the un, the rise in sea level the uncertainty is is um, the question you know it's the only question it's is it bad or is it really bad okay that's the question which will it be so basically the sea level is like another thermometer of the earth I mean we're we're putting huge amounts of heat. We're trapping huge additional amounts of heat on the earth from abrupt climate change, global warming. It's equivalent to something like 400,000 Hiroshima bombs per day. And this is um, guaranteed to cause uh, sea level rise, rapid sea level rise. So, what uh, can we do about it? Well, we have to turn down the thermometer. You know, about nine, over 90%, 93% of the additional heat is going into the oceans. So the oceans are becoming more stratified because warmer water floats on top. And this really has severe implications for uh, harming the, the marine food chain, the phytoplankton require nutrients to grow. These nutrients are upwelled from deeper water and if the water, if the ocean water is a lot warmer and stratified then you don't get the nutrients on the surface, you don't get the phytoplankton, therefore you don't get the zooplankton which, which, eat, which feed on them. So we have to basically turn down the thermostat and this is where I invoke the emergency basis three-legged stool or three-legged bar stool we have to slash fossil fuel emissions as quickly as possible. We have to cool the Arctic to ensure that the methane stays in the marine sediments and in the terrestrial permafrost. And we have to undergo carbon dioxide removal at a very fast rate. So different ways of removing more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and or oceans include putting biochar in soils, reforesting areas where we previously harvested trees. Aforestation is growing trees in areas where we haven't got trees, stimulating phytoplankton blooms in the barren desert parts of the ocean where there's no nutrients. And all of these things need to be done on an emergency basis. And it's only a matter of time before a global climate change emergency is declared around the planet. We've just basically lost Louisiana to flooding. Various parts of Europe are undergoing massive flooding. We're gonna have enormous hits to the global food supply. So climate change is an emergency. There's no question 